Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes I'm just going to put my headphones away My earbuds So, a few bits to tell you. So, relax and get ready to be bored by my life. And yep, Andre has just crawled out of his bag and he's looking at me. Can you believe it? He's been asleep, hasn't made a sound for hours. And as soon as I press the record button, he's out. Very likely gone to get his little, his girlfriend and... uh, Anyway, so quite a lot's happened. Um, I've been rebuilding my websites... So I've got the, the jasonnewland.com website. That's all up and running. There's still bits to do, but, you know. Um, my voice must be a trigger for him to get frisky or something. He was fast asleep. And he's got up a few times. He's had a cuddle with me. Made no noise. He's doing it on purpose. (sighs) Well. So I'll continue but. Uh. Things are changing. Now one of the things that's going to change is I am going to be, well I've already ordered a shed, a garden shed. It's a small one off the uh, catalogue online. So I'll pay it back over the next few months. So I think it's 200 and... £25 so I'm going to have it built behind me in the living room because there's a big gap behind me so it's going to be there and I'm going to fill it with the soundproofing pads that I've got all over my wall so I'm going to completely well, as much as I can soundproof inside so no longer I'm hoping will I have that little monkey distracting me I can't believe it seriously it's unbelievable not really, it's not really unbelievable because he does it regularly but as soon as I st- literally as soon as I started talking he came out of the bag looked at me as if to say ha ha time for my revenge and he wants his revenge because I cut his toenails but I cut them basically what happened he got his toenail his fingernail caught caught on the back so he started making a lot of noise in distress so I picked him up with the bag and I undid it you know and it got him out of there so it was time to cut his fingernails but would he sit still not even for a second even though I was trying to help him because if he gets caught in his fingernail gets caught when I'm not around, it's going to be stuck like that for hours. 
so I cut his fingernails and two of them were a bit too close and they had bled a little bit only a tiny little bit it wasn't like bleeding proper but just it was just because he was wiggling so much so he might be getting his own back for that <laughs> and yeah he's been a bit weird today been acting a bit strange I'm not sure what's going on with him anyway so a few things have happened since I last made a recording so I've been working on my I've got I don't know how many 11 websites now I think they're not all built yet but I've got the let me bore you to sleep dot com is back um, I haven't put everything on there yet I've got 35 recordings on there out of the 220 or whatever that I've got but that will be completed over the next day or so I've got a deep sleep whisper hypnosis dot com and, and various others that are there now today I've got a new website and it's called jasonnewland.store and it's going to be my online store which is kind of exciting at the moment there is nothing on there <laughs> there's literally nothing to buy uh, but I built the website so it's all kind of up and running but it just needs to have content put on there so what I've done and I'm not starting it this week because I'm out of sync with the sessions but next week I'm going to start a new timetable starting next Monday so it's going to be I'm going to do a recording a free recording for everyone to stream and download on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday Thursday, Friday and Saturday and we're going to make a recording also which is available to download on the jasonnewland.store as well as jasonnewland.com you can download it from there as well on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So that's the plan. On Monday, the free ones is going to be Let Me Boy to Sleep. Tuesday, Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Free. Wednesday, Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks Free. Thursday, Sleep Hypnosis Weekly Free. Friday, let me bore you to sleep free, and Saturday, let deep sleep whisper hypnosis free. The one pound to instantly download ones Monday, deep sleep whisper, Tuesday, let me bore you to sleep, Wednesday, deep sleep whisper hypnosis, Thursday, let me bore you to sleep, Friday, deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Saturday, let me bore you to sleep. And Sunday, relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. So that's the plan. I'm going to make six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it'll be... Yeah, so it'll be three deep sleep whispers and three... Let me bore you to sleeps that you can download uh, and a relaxation hypnosis with stress and anxiety that will be available to download for one pound each. And I'll still continue to make one, two, let me bore you to sleeps a week free, 
and two deep sleep whisper hypnosis sessions a week free. One relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks free. And the sleep hypnosis weekly free. So I might add a, a free one on Sunday as well. I don't know. Maybe... I'll see, I'll see, I don't know, maybe a let me boy to sleep on Sunday uh, as well. So that is the plan. And the reason for that plan is had this whole thing for years you know I've, and people have said to me why don't you why don't you charge people and I don't want to charge people you know I, I I want it to be a free service but then I get to the point where I can't stay unemployed I'm still I'm 49 I've still got 20 years worth of before I can retire, 20 years. So it seems he's really annoying me. Why does he do it right now? So, I've managed to do a compromise. So it's still a free service. I'll still have all the podcasts running. In fact, since I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I've got SoundCloud podcast as well as a um, podcast.co podcast. You know, so I've, I'm paying out a fair bit of money every month. I put the adverts back on the podcasts, but they're only on at the beginning. They're not on during or after the end, just at the beginning. So trying to find a way to cover the costs of running the free service, but then overlapping it to the point where I can perhaps earn a living doing what I enjoy doing, and also serving others, like helping other people. So it kind of is a win-win situation for everybody, really. So, and one pound isn't a lot of money. Uh, in all fairness, these days. So, I'm trying to think what you can get for a pound in this country. For one pound... Um, a loaf of bread although sometimes it's one pound fifty it's a loaf of bread okay box of Maltesers that's a pound box of Maltesers uh, what else for a pound I like things for a pound that's when I, when I go into these cheap shops I like to get things that cost a pound um, you can get pizzas for a pound sometimes like the Iceland ones um, but not always Not sometimes they're a bit more a pound wouldn't buy yeah it wouldn't even buy a can of coke for a pound by not a lot so yeah so that's why and I had to I make it as cheap as possible because out of that pound I'm going to be losing um, fees the fees from uh, what are they, what are they call PayPal fees so I'll only end up probably getting maybe 60 pence, something like that, out of the pound. 
so it's uh, I'll have to get a lot of downloads t in order for me to turn this into a job but that's my aim that's my aim so it's I kind of figured I might as well just go for it I get a lot of, I get quite a few messages from people telling me how what I do helps and um, listening to me is relaxing uh, these let me bore you to sleep I get a lot of positive feedback from these ones actually so I want to continue doing it but I know that if if for example I was forced back to work I'd end up probably working in I don't know, maybe a supermarket or some kind of quite low paid work like minimum wage because I don't think I could go back to counselling or anything like that I don't know if I'd be able to handle working in a call centre again like I used to so I'll be doing quite long hours and probably wouldn't have a huge amount of energy to be making many recordings because what I've noticed the last year I've made a lot of recordings it's sometimes two or three a day and I've never done that really I've had a few, a few periods when I have I've had a lot of energy um, and when I was self-employed I had a bit more time because I didn't have a lot of work so I used to make quite a few recordings back then but when I've worked for about one recording maybe maybe two recordings a week is about all I could really get through get, you know and I, d I don't want to go back to just making a couple a week because I wish there was a way of removing him from the building just for a see what he's doing because you would never look at a, a supermarket plastic carrier bag in the same way <laughs> wow oh anyway um, so that <laughs> that's what I'm doing And I hope that it's okay with people. And of course, there's still going to be um, the free. I'm still going to be making free recordings every day. So that's that's. It's not like I'm going to stop making the free stuff. But the one pound downloads will be available for those that want them, and they'll they'll build up over time. At the moment, there's none because the thousand and one thousand one hundred or whatever recordings that I've done so far are all free, and they're going to stay free. So it's only going to be future recordings added on to the extra one a day, the free ones that will be available. So that's the plan for that. You know what I don't understand is why did he go into the bedroom and grab the slipper which was in the bedroom 
And the reason it was in the bedroom is because that way, that's where he was uh, making love to his girlfriend last, like earlier. Why did he bring it in here to do it in front of me while I'm making a recording? Instead of doing it in the bedroom where he's got loads of... <laughs> that was a weird angle to see him from. Uh, loads of things to use. And also he's like, he's, he does it on the paper as well. So he's, that makes it even more noise. He's like laying on paper and squashing the paper around. Oh, yesterday. I actually spent an hour talking into this, into the microphone, to realise that I hadn't recorded it. Now Andre's laughing at that. He did, he laughed. Did you hear him? He's just laughing at me. He thinks it's funny. You think it's funny, Andre, do you? So that's that part. That's that's covered. So it's jasonnewland.store as in shop store. And I'm going to I'm not sure if it's up and running yet, the actual like online. The whip the website's built, but I don't know if it's gonna come up yet, but hopefully it will. Still a bit of tinkering to do, still a bit of changing stuff around. But uh, I'm pleased with how it is at the moment. So the other thing is I applied last week. I think it was last week. It might have been the week before. I applied for a university course. I mentioned it in a Let Me Boy to Sleep session. And... It was for a master's degree in positive psychology or applied positive psychology. So I, I applied for the applied positive psychology course. I spent all night filling the forms online for the course and also applying for student finance, which is a course costs £10,000 and it lasts for about 14 months or 15 months starting in January and I received a letter two days ago telling me that the student finance has accepted my application and they're going to give me the £10,000 to do the course Of course, you know, I have to be on a course to get that money. And the money doesn't go in my pocket, it goes to the university. Um, but it was like, wow, I couldn't believe it was so quick. So I was quite pleased about that, but I'm still waiting to hear from the university to, te te to let me know whether or not they're they've accepted me on the course so what I did is I took a photograph of the letter and I sent it to them via their portal online portal to let them know that I've had my funding accepted he's winding me up he really is <laughs> You know, sometimes he's the most cutest little thing. Then other times he's just like, like a little devil. Just <laughs> now he's banging against the radiator, which means the whole block is going to hear it. The whole block of flats. So all the radiators are connected, aren't they? Probably. so that's pretty cool I'm quite pleased with that and so just going to wait and see what happens 
I don't know, but if if the university turned me down for whatever reason, I could I'm gonna phone up the funding the student loan company and just say to them, "Am I still able to use this? But if I apply for another course that I get accepted on, can I do that?" And then I'll look around for like a similar course at a different university and maybe something CBT or perhaps a master's in psychology or something similar but I want to do the positive psychology a master's in counselling will be something that I could because that would be a progression from the counselling degree that I got but I want to, I'm really trying to live a more positive life and by studying and listening to lots of uh, inspirational, positivity, motivational talks and audio books and trying to absorb it and then pass on that message or that those those things I've learnt in my recordings you know with the the uh, the anxiety stress podcast I've got and maybe the sleep podcasts as well So that's pretty cool. So I'm happy that's going quite well. And having that um, shed, which I should get by the weekend. Or within a week anyway will be really cool because I'll be able to make recordings during the day which means I'll be able to start going to bed at a more reasonable time because because you know I'm staying up till it's 17 minutes past four in the morning and the idea of making this recording now is because it's quiet, which it is, until Andre wakes up. And now he's gone back into his bag and he's, he's quiet again. He amazes me. He really does. So I'm trying to think what else has happened. Um, we had a proper big thunderstorm today. Really, really loud. Doesn't affect Andre at all. I know some pets don't like it. But he's just... He was fast asleep. I'm sure I heard him say, I was talking, because my friend came up, and he said, oh, did you hear that? I said, yeah. I'm sure I heard Andre say, because I, I mentioned it to my friend, Andre didn't even get be affected by it. I'm sure I heard Andre say, under his breath, well, anything's better than listening to your voice. Seriously, shocking, shocks me sometimes. It's so rude. And uh, the other thing. So let me know what you think. It's, it seems to be I've got this big resistance about charging anything. 
for anything, I mean, literally anything. And I had this, I think I had this little fantasy, well, it's a big fantasy really, but going all the way back to when I first started doing this in 2006, I thought that someone would come along and finance what I do. You know, someone like really rich would come along. Maybe they had been helped themselves by what I do, or maybe their son or daughter or husband or wife or parents or, you know, something like that. And they saw the value in what I do and they sort of thought, oh, here's, here's money and we'll, you'd be supported. We give you a certain amount every year for the next 10 years or 20 years and so I could continue doing what I was doing and have a, a decent lifestyle. But it never happened. <laughs> I just actually believed that was going to happen. I really did. Not because I deserved it. Because I just felt that other people deserved it. Other people would benefit from that happening because then I'd be able to be freer and more you know to do more stuff and more more sessions although I'm, I've been doing quite a few as I said earlier so it's not this week actually it's been a bit of a weird week um, but it just never happened it's really didn't expect it in a kind of a charitable way just in a because I know so many really really wealthy people you know that would spend the you know, millionaires there's mili- there's, there's lot, lots and lots of really wealthy people I thought there'd be like one person would discover me and they kind of like oh there you go there you go JJ will sponsor you and just keep doing what you're doing son you're doing well and here's here's a few diamonds <laughs> no not diamonds but you know but so I come to the conclusion that really the only way forward for me to continue this In and progress it and grow it and to make it a, a better service for the long term is to turn it into a business at the same time keeping it a free service so I'm kind of ticking all the boxes still going to be free still producing one free recording every day I'll also be recording at least one uh, for the store one premium recording every day that can be downloaded on jasonnewland.store don't know why I'm quite pleased with that name So yeah, so that's, so hopefully the recording quality, or at least um, there'll be a lack of background sound within a week or so, and then I can look at turning this into a business and that's it so that should be quite cool and hopefully I'll also be going to university in January to do my masters in 
positive psychology. Plus, I had the first date that I've had for years. I had a date on Saturday night. The last time, uh, the last time I even held hands with a human being was about four years ago. I haven't had any human contact at all, pretty much. At least I've had Andre, but it's not quite the same. And so this this lady, she she came round. I'm not going to say her name, but she came round here to see Andre, and she's someone that I've met a few times and. She wanted to come and meet Andre, and you know we got off, we got on really well. And what was strange though that I noticed, and I'm seeing her again this weekend as well. So it'll be our second date, and uh, she's going to cook me a meal. What was weird though. I've lived on my own for so long and I haven't been in the company of a woman for so long that I forgot how to act and how to behave and I kind of didn't realise I'm trying to think I'll give an example so I've only got one chair, this big black squeaky chair. She's really little, so, and I'm pretty big, I suppose, so, but she, she's quite petite, so she was sitting on the side of the chair with me. And I always, I always thought that if I ever got a chance to be to maybe meet someone that likes me or that I like as well or mutual and she was in my flat and it was I don't know one o'clock in the morning and we were getting on really well that I'd be thinking about that I'd have like only one thing on my mind and I did have only one thing on my mind but it wasn't what I thought it would be. Do you know the one thing on my mind that I had while she was sitting here with me? The only thing I had on my mind was this. I need to fart. I realised I'd held in all my farts all night. Every now and then I'd go into the kitchen, I'd let one off, I'd like tend to cough or tend to tap on or something, to tap dance, you know. And at one point, I think she went into the, the bedroom or the kitchen or something to do something, and she came back in, and I let, I let out a fart, but it was quiet. But my goodness, it stunk so bad, because it had built up. This, you normally have like a I'm also got I almost like got an open door where the air is constantly flowing in and out but I, I closed the door and oh, bless her she didn't even mention it so I would have mentioned it if I was in someone's house and I went left the room and I came back in and it was a stinky fart I would have I don't think I could have stopped myself from saying something like what the heck is that you know I'd, I'd like run into the bathroom to make sure it wasn't me but she's a lot more classier than I am but it was so strange like wow oh. 
I didn't realise how much I farted. So it's very strange. It's a very weird, weird feeling. Another thing that happened is we were talking about my body. And she said, I've got a nice body. Um, I've got a belly. I've got like a beer belly. But the rest of me is slim and well, muscular. I don't know what you want to call it, but I'm not fat all over. I've just got a bit of a beer belly. The rest of me is firm. Well, it was that night. And I was showing off. And I said, look, even my legs, there's no fat on my legs. There's muscle. And I, and I lifted my right leg up. I was sitting down, lifted my right leg up. And I kind of, I tensed the calf muscle to show off. And my calf muscle seized. It stuck. It cramped. And I started yelling. It was so... It was... Agony. Really, really bad. It happens occasionally. Um, it's not very often. But when it does happen, it's like, oh. I struggled to walk for a few hours. And it just had to happen there when I was showing off. Saying how fit I was. And how muscular my legs are and that was embarrassing and he's on hobbling around for the rest of the day I'll talk about sitting in a chair you know what I did today or yesterday I went into I had to I needed to get some food I had zero, pra practically no food in the flat because I didn't go out on Monday at all didn't feel well didn't feel particularly well on Sunday either so Tuesday eventually I got up and I thought I just, just forced myself to go out get on the bus and although I ended up waiting for half an hour for the bus and picked up my prescription from the chemist and I knew that I had about 40 minutes till the next bus so I just took my time I was going to Iceland and I, I was going to go there last because I was getting frozen food so where I live there's this estate there's a few industrial estates where I live like in the town that I live probably are in most towns maybe I don't know and this industrial estate has got predominantly carpet and furniture stores big big stores and my brain for some reason I was I had the idea of going into next furniture shop because there's a next which has the clothes but then there's the I forget what they call it but it's the furniture part and I thought ah why not for some reason I want to go in there so let's go in there so I did and I had a little look around And then I came out of there. I saw some things that I liked. I'll tell you one thing that I quite like. There's these cups. They're big enough for a cup of coffee. They're not like mugs, I suppose. They're not massive. But then I don't need a massive mug. I don't drink a lot of coffee. But it's a nice size for coffee, I would say. Or, or tea, even. I suppose Horlicks, if you drink Horlicks but they're stacked on top of each other inside this little container thing and it really looks nice so I'm thinking of buying one because as far as with 
space saving if you know what I mean it's yeah and I saw a couple of other things that I might get in the future that will make my kitchen a bit tidier and a bit nicer but it's something you know I'll kind of do it over the next year or so just go in there and get a few little bits bit by bit just to improve my home what I really need is a new carpet so so what I did I went in there had to look around and then I left said goodbye to the two ladies that were sitting on the chairs near the entrance and I turned left and it was raining proper raining it was not pretend raining it was proper raining so I turned left out of the door well I got out of the door then turned left temperature was about 15 degrees and I walked past another store and it had a sign largest collection of lazy boys I went in there I missed I misread it I thought it said lady boys <laughs> no kidding it says lazy boys so I went in there and had a look around and there was lots of uh, individual chairs because I've got a recliner but it's not a lazy boy it's uh, is it lazy boy lazy bird big bird lazy boy it is lazy boy isn't it and I didn't you know, I looked around, some of them are expensive. The chairs are like £599 just for a chair. And I think what I wanted was, you know what Joey out of Friends had? We just kind of just basically pushed a lever or whatever. And it just, you could automatically, manually push it back. So that's what I was kind of looking to get when I bought this. Now this is wearing out. I mean, I've got pairs of underpants that don't look as worn out as this. To give you an idea, it's very worn. And I went in there, had a look around, and I sat in a few chairs because I do want to get another chair eventually especially with my lower back I need to get something that maybe is a bit straighter that supports my lower back and so I sat in a few of them I felt a bit like Goldilocks you know sitting in all the different chairs and I thought well, where's the porridge and I saw a chair that looked really nice but it didn't have a price on it so I sat in it and I thought I want to see what it feels like reclining so I pressed the button it was, this, it was electric so I had a button I kind of thing is it's too far down I couldn't see it all I could do was feel it with my fingers but I couldn't actually see it it'd make a lot more sense for the button to be on top or on the side so you could just press it rather than reach down to the side but I pressed it and I thought it was just going to flip up you know like mine does just flip up and you can just adjust it but no it moved very slowly upwards and backwards and it was really comfortable 
really comfortable. And then I thought, I better, I can't really go to sleep here. So I went to get out of it. I thought, like with my chair, you just push on your, you push your feet down, and the the foot rest that comes up just goes down on its own. Not with this lazy boy, didn't. And I kept pressing buttons, and I couldn't get it to move. And I was stuck in the chair because it was such a big chair. I couldn't get out. I was basically practically horizontal and and I was pressing it and I couldn't see the button I was pressing because it was right down like my arm's length down and I kept pressing and nothing was happening in fact at one point it was getting even more looked like I was going to tip backwards out of it I managed to keep my composure. I didn't cry. I didn't yell or anything. Didn't shout for help. Didn't call for an ambulance. And I kept playing with the different buttons. And eventually I found one of them. That Because I, I think I was pressing two at the same time. So they were cancelling each other out. Eventually I found one. And it went down. It went down even slower than it went up. So I'm just waiting there for about an hour as it eventually goes down and I get out and look around and I kind of leave the shop. It was... I'm sure the same two ladies were at the door there that was in the other one. But that just might be my memory. Then I walked around to, yeah, because there's all these covers, these little plastic, well, they're big plastic covers that are there to shelter people from the rain, I guess. But because of the wind, it wasn't really doing its job. So I walked around. All the doors were kind of opening because they're automatic. So they were just opening and closing every time people walked past. But one store had that door permanently open. Because they were probably just fed up with hearing it going. Now I don't know if that's what the door sounded like. But it's just an example of what it might sound like. And I kept walking, and eventually I got to Iceland, went in there and bought some bits, a couple of pizzas, some cans of Coke, and some bread, and some tea cakes, milk, a few bits of chocolate. Bearing in mind I hadn't had any chocolate the day before or hardly any cokes so I was just going to treat myself really and what else did I buy oh, I got some Andre some wet food some cat food and I had three carrier bags full of stuff I had some breakfast cereal as well And for some reason it came to £32, which is a bit more than I expected to be spending, especially on just a basket full of stuff. So I, I got that. And I was queuing there, waiting to be to pay. And there was a lady in front of me that had more stuff than me, and there was a lady in front of her and she was trying to use, I think she was trying to use an app on her phone. And it wasn't working properly. 
so the queue was building up and the manager came over and said we'll try and sort it out and then he called another member of staff to get onto a different till and the people behind me went onto that till and all got served and were out of there before I even got served but eventually I did get served and I got everything sorted and walked back to the bus station and oh my bag split before I even the, the when I was packing my bags I took a couple of bags with me and one of the bags just split straight away and I said it's a bag for life though isn't it he said yeah I know it's not necessarily going to last forever I said no I don't mean that I mean I can get another one free can't I he said oh yeah I'm so glad you said that I really did think that you meant that you thought it was going to last forever and I was going to have to stand here and explain to you the vulnerabilities of plastic carry bags I said no no it's fine I just, just want a carry bag ready so I can put the food in he said, yeah, that's a good idea. They are quite handy, aren't they? I said, yeah. Um, can I pay, please? He said, yeah, you can. I said, thanks. So I paid that. I left and I went to the bus stop. I only had to wait about 10 minutes for the bus. And when I got on the bus, it was the same bus driver that had dropped me off. before so basically he dropped me off gone all the way into town turned around probably stopped and had a cup of coffee and drove all the way back again and I got into his bus and I was sitting there on the bus no well I was but this is a different thing on the journey there I was sitting behind somebody that looked practically identical to one of my cousins but the thing is she looked how my cousin looked 25 years ago so it can't be couldn't have been her but she looked like this facially exactly the same because for some reason the, the women in my, my family are quite attractive <laughs> it sounds like a weird statement isn't it but they don't look like the men again that's another weird statement the I don't know I think it's see basically she my nan my nan got annoyed at me one day because the picture of her and her family like all her sisters and brothers she had a big family growing up and her sister I remember saying to her she's gorgeous her sister one of her sisters I mean she's long dead but she was pretty looked like a model like just really just wow I remember my nan, my nan saying well, what am I corned beef like you know it's just like I was alright as well you know like no I wasn't I wasn't comparing anyone I was just saying that it's like wow she was really just stunning like that's how I found her to be and uh, and then I've got another cousin who's about the same age as me and she's another one that just just yeah just completely how did she get so attractive it's 
weird. I mean, there's no reason why she shouldn't be, but she was just like... She could have been a model if she wanted to be. Mind you, so could I have done. Still could. I reckon podgy old men, podgy middle-aged men, there's a lot of call for it. I could advertise. What could I advertise? Brute deodorant. I could advertise... I could advertise McDonald's. Wouldn't even have to eat the food. I could just say McDonald's is nice and people just assume that I eat it. Could advertise Coke, Coca Cola, Coca Cola. This reminds me of talking about, you know, people's looks. It's a bit shallow, isn't it, really? But my new female friend said to me. The morning after, Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon, she said to me, you know what, you're a lot more attractive in the dark. What? Yeah, yeah, and she started laughing, so... That's nice. So there you go. Like I'm not going to say any more about that. <laughs> but that was quite funny. So there you go. That's a little update on me. And next week I'm going to start the... The proper... Structure of the timetable. So at least then you'll know when stuff's coming out. You know that there'll be a let me boy to sleep on Monday uh, and Friday. They'll be free and you can download them. You can down, and also there'll be ones available to buy if you want to on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday so I think I'd like to do one on Sunday for free as well so then it evens it out one, two, three four five, six yeah, so that means there'll be three three frees and three three t- three to download free and three that you can download for one pound each and of course they'll all be different and I'm looking forward to if nothing else just to to start building up a library of recordings that are not available anywhere else not available on any podcasts just all only available on jasonnewland.store but also the links will be on all my other websites as well so you, you know you don't have to go to the to that website to get the stuff but it might be easier but I'm quite looking forward to it really yeah forward to it yeah so that's it for me I made a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recording yesterday evening so although I've been a little bit inactive the last week or so I've done two recordings in the last I don't know how many hours probably seven hours so that's that's good, and I'll very likely make a recording tomorrow 
I'm probably going to do a relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. I'll be making one of those. I also might make a let me bore you to sleep as well. So I'll just do a few over the next week. And then I'll start the timetable. I more almost feel like I'm a bus. So I'm going to do my best, very, very best, to stick to the timetable and release recordings on those days. Which means I'll record some stuff ahead of time to add in case I'm, you know, unavailable or unwell for whatever reason. So I can just still upload and release recordings for the appropriate days. And that, my friends, is it for now. I will speak to you very, 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 very soon. And I will be I'm quite tired actually. <sighs> I also am going to be transcribing all of my recordings and making some books, writing some books. But that's not going to be this year. But I'd like to start the transcribing within the next month or so and yeah the, the first book will be out next year I want next year to be the my very first book that I release that I publish and that's uh, be a major accomplishment for me because I've been talking about doing it for years. I've even had the title of some books for years. Someone, I even had someone design the cover for one of my books about five years ago. It was an artist and she did it for me and still haven't got around to writing the thing so next year is what I hope to do I think I've got a few books in me and they'll basically just be the same as me talking and if you listen to my recordings when you read the books you'll just hear my voice probably I do when I when I read a book by somebody who I know, you know, that I've listened to, uh, audios or, you know, something like that, I hear their voice when I'm reading it. I don't know if that's normal, but that's what I do. I wonder if I read a book by Walt Disney but I hear Mickey Mouse's voice. I don't know if he ever wrote a book. He's a very busy man though. Hmm. Anyway. I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. You take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy lots of love